This is chapter 11, section 5. We're going to find square roots of variable expressions. The question is today, does the square root of x squared equal x in all cases? Let's look at some, look, let's look at some positive values and substitute into the equation the values to see if they will be true statements. First, we're going to let x equal 4. Now remember, to find a true statement, you have to substitute the x in here on the left side, and you have to substitute the same value of x on the right-hand side. And this equal sign means that they have to be true. So let's put the 4 in for the x on the left side, and let's put the 4 in for the x on the right side. Let's simplify both sides and see what we come up with. Well, 4 squared is 16, and the square root of 16 is equal to 4. And on the right side, we have 4. So this is a true statement. Let's look at, for, at the value of x equal 8. Substitute in for x squared. The x here goes is an 8. 8 squared is 64. Let's bring the 8 down on the right side. The square root of 64 is 8, and of course the right side is 8. So 8 is equal to 8. So this is a true statement also. Let's try one more value. We're going to let x equal 20. Substitute the x for 20 on the left side. Substitute the x for 20 on the right side. 20 squared is 400. The square root of 400 is 20. And of course, on the right-hand side, we have 20 all the way down. And the statement is 20 equals 20. This is a true statement. So it would seem that the square root of x squared is equal to x for all positive values of x. We have sort of proven that. Let's try some negative values of x and see what happens here. Once again, we've got to substitute negative 2 on the left side and negative 2 on the right side, and they have to be equal to each other. So negative 2 squared is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. Oh, but look at this. What do we have on the right-hand side? We have a negative 2. 2 is not equal to negative 2, so we have some a problem someplace. Let's try a negative number. Maybe that was just for negative 2. Let's see if negative 10 gets us the same result. So we're going to substitute negative 10 here. Negative 10 on the right side. Negative 10 squared is 100. Of course, the negative 10 on the right side just keeps coming down. And the square root of 100 is 10. 10 is not equal to negative 10. This is not a true statement. Let's look at negative 5. Substitute in for the left-hand side. Substitute for the right side. We get negative 5 squared into the radical. It's equal to negative 5. Negative 5 squared is 25. And the square root of 25 is equal to 5. But it is not equal to negative 5. So this is not a true statement. So we have a problem. It should be obvious by now that when x is negative, then the square root of x squared is not equal to x. We have sort of gone through that and shown you several examples. And if you would put a hundred more examples in there, you'd get the same result. The square root of x squared is not equal to x when x is negative. So the question is, what does the square root of x squared equal when x is negative? If x is negative, then the square root of x squared is equal to a positive x. And to make it positive, we need the absolute value signs. Because remember, any number inside the absolute value sign will give a positive result. Let's go back to the previous page. I've copied the previous page here, so we're going to take a look at it again. We're going to let x equal negative 10. So remember, this side here has got to equal that side there when we get down to the end. We're going to put a 10 in for x, or I mean, I'm sorry, a negative 10 in for x. So we get negative 10 squared, that's 100. 
and we're going to put a negative 10 in for the right side inside that absolute value. That be is, that's a negative 10 all the way down. The square root of 100 is 10, and what's the absolute value of negative 10? It's 10. Look at this. We now have a true statement. Remember that if there's any chance that x is going to be negative, then the square root of x squared has got to be the absolute value of x. So how do you new, use this newfound knowledge? Let's simplify some expressions. This is going to be similar to your homework tonight. The square root of 16x squared. Well, the square root of 16 is equal to 4. And the square root of x squared is equal to the absolute value of x. Remember, if x is positive, you get a true statement. If x is negative, put a negative in there for x squared. If you put a negative 2 in there, you're going to get a positive 4 underneath there. And the square root of positive 4 is 2. If the, you did not have the absolute value signs and you put a negative 2 here, you get negative 8. You can't have a positive equal to a negative. So you need those absolute value signs right there. Let's look at another example. 24a cubed, and I've written this all the way out, and there are some shortcuts you can take here a little bit later on. So we divide this up into 24, square root of 24, times the square root of a cubed. What allows us to do that? It's the product property of square roots. Square root of 24, we're not going to spend a lot of time on. That's 2 times the square root of 6. Now let's take a look at this, a cubed a cubed is equal to the square root of a squared times a. a squared times a. 2 plus 1 is the power of 3. Now, let's take a look at this right here. We're going to divide this up due to the product uh, property of square roots. And we're going to take the square root of a squared and separate it. And we've got the square root of a. You can see that if you take those two and multiply them together, you get a squared times a under the radical. What is the square root of a squared? It's equal to just an a. Oh, but why don't we have the absolute value signs around there? Didn't we say before that the square root of a squared was the absolute value of a? Well, that's not always the case. You have to look back at the first, at the beginning problem. Do you see this three? This says a to the third power. Let's say a has a negative number, like negative 2. This becomes a, or negative 2, to the third power, which is negative 8. You can't have a negative underneath the radical sign. The square root of a negative number is not defined for us right now. So a cannot be negative. If it is negative, is not defined. So in this case, A is not negative. It's got to be positive. And since it has to be positive, this has to be positive, and you don't need the absolute value signs to make it positive because it's positive in the first place. So we have 2 times A times the square root of 6A. And what you do is you take everything under the radicands and you combine them together and put them underneath one radicand and you take the A and the 2 and you put, put it to the left of the radicand. The radicands usually last. You know, in these simplification processes, the number will be first, then you'll have the variables, and then you'll have the radicands. Let's take a look at this one. The square root of m squared minus 18m plus 81. This should look familiar to you. This is called a perfect square trinomial. Remember that from chapter 5? The perfect square trinomial can be factored into m minus 9 squared. Notice that this and this squared cancel, sort of, and you get the base left, which is m minus 9. But why do we put absolute values around here? 
Well, let's take a look at the numbers. If m is negative 7, right there, m is negative 7, under the radical we have negative 7 minus 9, which is negative 16. Negative 16 squared is equal to 256, which is positive 16. Let's take that same neg negative 7 and put it in for here. We have negative 7 minus 9 is negative 16 on the right-hand side. You can't have a positive 16 right there equal to a negative 16. So you need those absolute value signs. Let's take a look at this one. Square root is 64, x to the 8th. Square root of 64, of course, is 8. x to the 8th. Now, remember, we we're trying to get a power of 2 out of there. So x to the 8th is equal to x to the 4th squared. And now we can just cancel the radical and the squared, and we come up with x to the 4th. So your answer is 8x to the 4th. We do not need absolute values around there because x to the 8th is going to be positive no matter what x is and x is going to x to the 4th is going to be positive no matter what x is you got to remember that anything taken to an even power whether it's negative or positive will always be a positive number it's one of the things you've got to remember for this any number taken to an even power will always be positive and therefore absolute value signs Here's some more examples, similar to your homework. Square root of 196y squared. Square root of 196 is square root of 196 is 14, and the square root of y squared is equal to y. With the absolute value signs, of course. Because remember, if this is negative, if y is say a negative 2, that's negative 2 squared, which is 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. So this becomes 2. But if you just had negative 2 here wouldn't be a true statement. So that's why we need those absolute values. 36x squared. Square root of 36 is equal to 6. And the square root of x to the fourth squared. Remember, you're trying to get a squared out of this right here. Because once you get the squared, you can take the radical sign and the square, and they cancel each other. And you get x to the fourth left. Why well, don't we need absolute values here? x to the eighth power, no matter what x is, it's going to be a positive number. x to the fourth power, no matter what x is, is going to be a positive number. Square root of m squared minus 6m plus 9. This is m minus 3 quantity squared. m minus 3 quantity squared. The radical and the squared cancel, and you have m minus 3 left. But notice we have these absolute values. Why is that? Go back to this right here. If m is, let's say, negative 2, we'd have negative 2 minus 3, which is negative 5. Negative 5 squared is 25, and you have this whole thing equal to 5. But if you put the negative 2 here, you'd have negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5, if you didn't have the absolute values. And negative 5 down here would not be equal to a positive 5. So you need those absolute value signs. 18a cubed, that's equal to square root of 9 times the square root of 2. That's what 18 is. Square root of 9, square root of 2, which is 3, times the square root of 2. Let's take a look at a cubed now. a cubed is equal to a squared times a. Okay? So that's equal to the square root of a squared times the square root of a. Square root of a squared is equal to a... And, of course, the square root of a is just the square root of a. Once again, why don't we have absolute value signs around this a? Go back to the original problem. It's a negative exponent. What do we say about negative exponents? I'm sorry, it's not a negative exponent. It's a, it's a uh, odd exponent. And you can't have a negative number here. If you have a negative number there, it's going to be a negative number under the radical. And we said you can't have a negative number, a number under the radical. So A has got to be positive. And since it's positive here, it's going to be positive down there. So you don't need those absolute value signs. Negative 64x squared. 
I'm sorry, the, neg the uh, negative square root is 64x squared. That's the negative square root of 64, which is negative 8. x squared, take this and separate it by the product of uh, property of uh, square roots. This is equal to square root of x squared. And what did we say the square root of x squared was? It is the absolute value of x. Solving equations. Another part of this chapter or this section has to do with solving equations. There's two methods. Method one, solve n squared equals 64. We're trying to get the x by itself. So we divide by 9, and we get x squared equals 64 over 9. We take the square root. Remember, we have to undo this, the x squared, and the square root is the inverse, sort of, of x squared. Take the square root of this side, and we get 64 over 9, the square root of that. Remember, whenever you take the square root, you need a plus and minus when you're doing equations because there's two roots. This is equal to x equals plus and minus 8 thirds. There's another method. Here's the problem. 9 squared equals 64. Subtract 64, and you'll come up with this. This is a difference of squares, which you know is 3x minus 8 times 3x plus 8. Now, by the zero product property, you can take that one set it equal to zero. Take this one, set it equal to zero. Solve your equations. You get eight-thirds for one. Negative eight-thirds is the other solution. You have two solutions. Notice over here, they're the same solutions. Know how to use both of these methods to solve equations. General things to think about. You cannot have a negative value under a radical sign. Negative 4, for example, is not defined at this point. If you have an odd power in the problem, you will not need an absolute value for that variable since the variable will always be positive value. So if you have an odd power right there, if this is negative, it's undefined. So it's got to be positive all the time. If it's positive here, then it's going to be positive over here. If you have higher powers under the radical sign, use the power of power properties to get a power of 2. Notice I got x to the 10th under the radical. So I'm going to take a 2 out of there, a power of 2. 2 times 5 is 10 by the product of a power of a power, of a power property. This and this cancel, and you get x to the 5th. Now, why does it have to be absolute values here? Well, if x is negative, it's taken to an even power here. It's going to be positive under the radical. And a square root of a positive number gives you a positive number. But if you put a negative here to an odd, um, to an odd power, that negative is going to be a negative number. So you need the absolute value signs to make it positive. Any number taken to an even power will always be positive x to the 12th, that's always going to be positive. This is always going to be positive, so you not, do not need the absolute value signs. It will never be negative in, it, in the first place. Your homework tonight is listed on the top of this page. Be careful of absolute value signs in your answers. Study the examples in the book and go back, and if you want to listen to this again or study this uh, flip chart, it's on the wiki. Uh, I have one more example here that is written out so you can follow it. This is probably more uh, difficult than any problem in your book. So we have this problem. We separate it up first into different components or different factors, as you'd say. Let's do 56. The square root of 56 is 4. The square root of 4 times 14, which is 2, 14, 2 square root of 14. So we're done with the constant. A to the 6, B to the 4, C cubed down here now. We just rewrote this all the way down while we were dealing with 2 to this, uh, when we were dealing with 56. Now, a to the 6, remember we said to take a power of 2 out of here? Here it is. a cubed, the second power, this cancels, and we have the a cubed left. Okay? And why do we have to put that a cubed with absolute values? Because here, it could be negative, couldn't it? We can have a negative a here because a negative to the even to an even power is a positive number. So this is defined. The square root of some positive number. So if this can be negative, this can be negative, 
a cubed can be negative, and you can't have a positive number equal to a negative number, so you need those absolute value signs. Let's take a look at the b now. We have b to the fourth, b to the fourth, b to the fourth. Here we're going to take a square out, the square root and the two cancel, and you get b squared. Now we do not need absolute values here because no matter if it's positive or negative, it's going to be positive there. No matter whether it be positive or negative, it's going to be net positive here. C cubed. C cubed cannot be a negative number. Let's look at this right up here. C cubed cannot be negative because you can't have a negative under the radical. So therefore, when you separate the C cubed, C squared, and the C, the C does not need those absolute values because C can't be negative in the first place. So once you get everything simplified, you have to reorganize it. So you take everything under the radical. So you get 14C, that goes under the radical right here. That's the uh, product uh, property of, um, or the property of products of uh, square roots. The 2 comes first because it's a constant. A cubed, B squared, and the C. Put them in alphabetical order. Well, I hope you understood this. Uh, this is uh, somewhat tricky, the absolute values. So you really have to think about positive and negative values. you got to remember, you can't have a negative number under the radical. Okay? Well, good luck with your homework. If you have some problems, you can email me or text me, and I can probably get back to you with some answers if you need help.